Hello everyone, welcome back to Evita Cooks. Hope everybody is enjoying this hot, hot summer. Today we will be talking about the benefits of flavored waters. That's right. Uh, these waters are often referred to as fermentation starters or natural probiotics. They are absolutely delicious. Uh, I've already shared the full tutorial on how to make a pineapple fermentation starter. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the same concept to make a flavored water using herb. I have fresh rosemary from the garden today, but you can use the herb of your choice. You can use mint, peppermint, thyme, oregano, chamomile, and lemon balm are my two favorites. I make these all year round, especially during the summer. I really enjoy the flavor. Fermentations are a form of a culture and that can be extracted from the environment using fruits, vegetables, in this case we're going to be using herbs and in just a little bit you're going to see just how easy it is. I'm also going to show you some of the ones that I have going. Flavored waters are a better alternative to the carbonated drinks that are loaded with sugars and to be honest with you, once you get used to drinking these waters, uh, you may not want to go back to the carbonated drinks. Not just because they're delicious, but they're also loaded with probiotics that are healthier and you will feel great and full of energy. Personally for me, the most frustrating symptoms of congestive heart failure is feeling very low energy. Uh, it takes me several hours to reboot and the mornings are especially difficult oftentimes due to uh, sleepless nights. However, I find that by drinking these flavor waters early in the morning I can reach a higher level of activity quicker and uh, the probiotics are great for your digestion so what's there to lose and before I continue let me remind you that I'm not a doctor nor do I play one on TV and the information I provide you is both my personal experience and opinion and always consult your doctor before trying any of these alternatives at home I want to show you some of the uh, waters that I have going I always have several of them going at the same time um, but these happen to be at different stages of the process okay uh, this is actually the rosemary uh, starter that I have going that I just started this is uh, actually after almost 48 hours but I have another one here also about 48 hours same concept only this time I used rosemary and strawberry and this is just to show you that you can basically uh, mix and match fruits and vegetables and still get an awesome result. I'm pretty sure you can see the bubbles on the top of the jar. Now as you stir the bubbles form that means that the sugars in the jar have converted to alcohol and they're going through the process and extracting the flavor of the rosemary. Usually this process can take anywhere between three to five days. But the time it takes is going to depend on two things. The environment and the internal temperature in your home. In the summertime when I make these, uh, they usually take anywhere between two to three days before they ferment. In the winter time it takes a little bit longer. You really just have to get started and just dive into it and start experimenting if, it, if this is something that interests you. This one I made at the same time, only for this one I added some strawberries. I'm really looking forward to tasting this one in particular. This is actually a new flavor. For the first 24 to 72 hours, we are going to keep them at room temperature uh, in the uh, kitchen, in the warmest part of the kitchen. I usually just keep them next to the refrigerator or on top of the refrigerator, which the top is actually very warm. And that's also going to help to accelerate the uh, process. It's important to let it breathe. Remember, we are creating a culture and the culture basically is being created from the environment. Of course, we're using herbs in this case, but the environment plays a very big part in the process. You can make this any size you want, even a half gallon. And I'm about to open it so you can see, but check out those bubbles. It's fizzing and it's bubbly and delicious. Sometimes they're so bubbly and fizzy that they spill. This one's ready and I'm going to talk to you guys about time, how long these last and what to do to refresh them. But look at that. Of course, depending on the fruit that you use and how sweet they are or tart they are, 
Uh, some of them will ferment better than others, but either way, you're still gonna get a very tasty flavored water, okay? This is the kiwi. The taste is very similar to champagne. It's not alcoholic, by the way. The sugars do convert to alcohol, but it's a very low percentage. So this is something that you can drink yourself and even give it to your children. But um, again, you should look into it, especially if you have any concerns about giving it to your children. My kids absolutely love it. This one uh, is very fizzy as well. You're not gonna get a lot of the bubbles. Uh, it's not always gonna bubble, but it is fizzy. And I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see. All four of these have to be fed because I have not used them in the last week or so. So it's important that in order to keep the culture or the fermentation going that we feed them at least once a week. To feed them depending on how tart the fruit is, like I said, uh, you can add anywhere between one teaspoon up to a tablespoon, which is three teaspoons of sugar. I always use organic cane sugar, uh, non-processed, non-refined. Uh, you can use the uh, white sugar if you want. But to be honest with you, if the object is to eat or drink healthier drinks, why not just spend a little bit more money and use the uh, raw organic cane sugar instead of the processed sugar. But if that's all you have, that's fine too. You're still gonna get a fermentation starter. I'm just not sure just how active it's gonna be because I never use granulated sugar. But you can go ahead and give it a try. And if you do, just leave a comment below the video let me know what your results are. These are blackberries and they were not that sweet. So in this case, because I've not used it in about a week, I'm gonna add a full tablespoon of sugar and keep in mind that when you add the sugar it might bubble over the truth is is you can have these fermentation starters going for months and months and simply months. by adding more sugar and depending on how the fruit looks you can always add a little bit more fruit you can even change the fruit just basically if you decide that you want to use raspberries instead you can add raspberries because this is a live culture so it's going to be continuing indefinitely. Sometimes I like to discard the fruit. Uh, I actually use it in the garden as compost. I never throw anything out. I don't like wasting anything. After each feeding, we're going to cover it up. And I'm gonna keep it at room temperature on my counter for at least 24 hours. Next day, I'll put it back in the refrigerator and then it's ready to enjoy. Now, the longer it stays in the refrigerator, the more fizzy it gets. And you have to definitely try them and taste them all the time because sometimes if you keep them too long, they can turn into vinegar. Well, either way, you're either gonna get a drink or you're gonna get a vinegar out of it. Don't throw it out. But just keep that in mind that if you don't feed it at least once a week or if you're not drinking them, or using them to make breads or whatever it is you want to use them for, um, they may turn into vinegar. I've had some of them really turn to wine, so <laughs> which is not a bad thing at all. And usually and typically what I do is I use those for cooking. But anyway, uh, just keep tasting them and titrating them and testing the recipes and have fun with it. Why not, right? Same thing with the uh, kiwi. We're going to go ahead and feed it. I've already tasted it, so I'm definitely going to be adding uh, to all of these one tablespoon of sugar. Again, that's going to depend on how sour the fruit is. This one, when I taste it, is a little bit more sour than I wanted it to be, but that's usually the case with the kiwi. And see, as soon as you add the sugar and stir, you hear the fizz. Okay, I told you that I have these fermentation starters in different stages and I have one here that is due for the entire process and I want to show you what I mean by that. This one I made in February of this year. This is actually a uh, fermentation starter that I made using strawberries and some mandarin orange rye. I actually drink from this one just about every day, whether it's for my breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I always have a little bit of this one because it is my favorite, but I'm gonna show you how to freshen it up after you use it, okay? Now I have here some freeze-dried strawberries. Yes, you can use freeze-dried berries. I've tried making these with frozen fruit and uh, the results are not always the greatest. So I either use fresh fruit or vegetables. 
or freeze dried. And since this one's due to be refreshed, I figure it would be the perfect time to show you how that's done. From here, I used about six ounces of the fermentation starter this morning. I'm gonna take about a quarter of a cup of the freeze dried strawberries. Go ahead and add it to the jar. And these can keep going indefinitely, like I said. You know, it'll continue doing its thing. So uh, this is actually a very fun project. It's actually something you could do with your children. Next, what I'm going to do is add some sugar. Today I'm only going to be adding one tablespoon of sugar, mostly because I know that the uh, strawberries that I use are sweet. So if I can get away with using less sugar, I'm always going to try. We're going to ferment it again for another 24 hours. It's kind of difficult to record these uh, videos uh, while I'm doing the work, but I am trying to give you guys the full experience. Now, I'm going to be simply adding some purified water to this and we're done. And I added about a cup of water. And you saw just how simple it is. Now, after 24 hours, this one will be ready and I can continue enjoying it and feeding it as I go. I can keep it in the refrigerator for many months, as you can see, for as long as I feed it at least once a week. Moving right along, let's go ahead and make the rosemary fermentation starter. And just for the sake of the video, because I'd like to give you guys a complete recipe with every video. I'm going to be using a measuring cup, but you can pretty much eyeball it. And I'm going to just basically strip about a half a cup of fresh rosemary. Smells so good. I'm going to be making a rosemary chicken today. And I'm also going to be dehydrating some rosemary because I have such an abundance of rosemary in the garden. I actually, uh, this time of year is actually the time when I dehydrate most of my herbs. Even though I live in Florida, um, after the uh, summer, the herbs start to dwindle a little bit. So I like to keep these on hand. And since I make my own uh, homemade natural seasonings, I like to have them available anytime I need them. So I'm gonna do maybe one more. Like I said, you could eyeball the amount of rosemary that you use, doesn't have to be exact, but I always like to give you guys a full recipe so that when you try it at home, it turns out the same or maybe better than when I make it here in my home. It's always important that we use clean and sanitized jars. That's just basic. Now to the rosemaries, I'm going to be adding a quarter cup of raw organic cane sugar. I've made it using um, honey. I've also used uh, coconut sugar. Uh, I like the organic cane sugar results a lot better. And finally, I'm going to be adding some purified water. And we need enough water to bring it up to about one inch headspace. Depending on the weather or the temperature inside your home, this process can take anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, up to 72 hours. Okay, all we have to do now is cover it. And I'm using these kitchen towels. You can use a piece of cloth. You can even use a paper towel and secure it with a rubber band. And I always peel back some of the layers because I need this to breathe and also to be able to catch some of that bacteria from the natural environment. And all we have to do is date it and label it, set it aside on top of the counter in the warmest area of the kitchen or in the oven turned off with the light on. It just depends on how much of a hurry you're in. But on top of the counter is just fine and we're gonna leave it for 24 to 72 hours. After 48 to 72 hours, the fermentation starter will be ready. I'm going to remove the cloth, stir, and cover it with one of these plastic uh, covers. Uh, they say they're leak proof, but don't believe everything they tell you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and enjoy. And guys, to make the uh, strawberry and rosemary fermentation starter, I used 
half a cup of fresh rosemary leaves, half a cup of strawberries, and I use fresh strawberries, one quarter cup of sugar, and the purified water. And just keep in mind that the amount of rosemary and strawberries is not that important. You can use as much or as little as you want. You can use the freeze dried, like I said, or any combination of herb and fruits or fruits by themselves. You can use vegetables, but that's a whole different type of video. I hope you give this recipe a try. And for more fun projects like this one, consider subscribing to the channel, like, share, and comment for the YouTube algorithms and activate the bell so you never miss out on any of my videos. Until next time, I'm Evita Cooks. Bon appetit. You really have to try it.